Mr. Lyndon Batiste. Good morning to you. Hi, good morning. He is uh, a well-known author here in Trinidad and Tobago. And I don't know, I shouldn't say it. Maybe you should just see it. <laughs> Well, what's wrong with saying, ooh, my testicles? Exactly. There's absolutely nothing wrong with saying, ooh, my testicles. And this is uh, the latest from Lyndon Batiste, uh, born in Trinidad and Tobago, uh, doing great stuff. And I'm quite anxious to hear and to learn what ooh, my testicles is all about. I'm sure you are as well. He's a software engineer, lecturer, and novelist who, uh, thank goodness, writes for the fun of it. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to ask why. Uh, that's like, all right, you should be happy that he writes for the fun of it. Tell me all about yourself, Lyndon. When did you realize or acknowledge or know that, listen, I was born to write? Um, that, well, it, it is, was something that was always a, a passion, um, attempting short stories, longer stories, and never finishing them. And um, I remember the first story that it was a Western that got lost somewhere. And... Uh, to consider it seriously uh, as a career is only last year, November, when I launched my first book, which was 90 Days of Violence. And I've got yeah. that right here, actually, 90 Days of Violence uh, by Lyndon Batiste as well. I don't know if we can just take a shot of it, but, uh, ooh, this is pretty cool, what I'm seeing behind. The tabloid. Can I flip this in the middle of the shot? Yeah? I can flip it. That's the back. So what 90 Days of Violence. You have a lot of fiction behind um, events like kidnappings and bombings and how it all escalated. Yeah. I have a prototype prime minister in the story also. So a the prototype first... prime minister. <laughs> <laughs> so the first chapter is actually titled The Seventh Prime Minister. So it follows things from a, a political and grassroots and mafia style story. Mafia style story. Yeah. What was the response like to 90 Days of Violence? Um, I have had a favorable response to some extent. A lot of people see the word violence on Trinidad and they, they get turned off from it. Um, because the thing is, you know, it's like right in the, the dark side of things. So some, some people are kind of adverse to it. Is there any particular reason why you, 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 you chose 90 Days of Violence? What was the reasoning behind this? I wanted to take a lot of um, events and, you know, put a, a solid story into it because I, I think sometimes a lot of things that happen in Trinidad gets lost. It's so hard to separate fact from fiction sometimes. You know, you, you hear, like, let's look at the bombings in um, Frederick Street and Port of Spain. Some of us have forgotten about yeah. that. But that's not something we really should Yeah, and, and, and Mr. Big coming out and no one knowing who Mr. Who Big is. is. Mr. <laughs> so is, is that the, my fiction behind it? Aram Hamad wasn't the loud, gesticulating man he had been on New Year's Day. Rather, his mood was pensive. He was a tall man who carried a couple extra pounds with broad shoulders and the facial structure of a rounded horseshoe. Although his moustache had streaks of grey, his hair, which had begun to recede at the forehead, was jet black. Thin brows hung low over green eyes, short ellipses in his head. His most distinguishing features were a broad forehead and straight nose, the tip of which hooked over the whiskers above his mouth, the deep lines around high cheekbones signaling or signaled growing confusion like a child lost in the plaza. The Syrian had been pacing the luxurious Persian-style bedroom since the wee hours of the morning. I, I can go on. <laughs> the location is Mount Hope, the first forensic lab built in the Caribbean, a facility equipped with the latest technology that money could import. A uh, few people knew the 150-square-foot lab existed, Ooh. <laughs> mistaking it for another abandoned section of the hospital. We need to read this book. Intrigue, drama. What else can we expect from 90 you Days You can of expect violence? a lot of uh, different interactions with different classes, uh, you know, and, and ethnic, ethnic groups. So I tried to do some research into that. So it follows a Syrian family, African, Eastern characters. Fiction, yeah. Fiction, okay. One, one ton of cocaine goes missing. Fiction. Fiction, all right. Fiction. So we don't want you calling Lyndon and saying, what's this? You know? Fiction, right? I guess you can, uh, whatever you get from it, that's uh, entirely up to you. Of course, everyone is entitled to their own opinion. But before we go back to my testicles, just an overall uh, summary of 90 Days of yeah. Violence for the individual who probably wants to pick it up today. Okay. Um, one ton of cocaine goes missing. The, there's a race suddenly on for it. 
the Syrians, East Indians, Africans, and the government is involved. And the intrigue in it is the IRA, the Irish Republican Army, is actually a character that appears in the story. So on the cover, you'll see someone there with, you don't see their face, but you see a red head. Mm -hmm. So that's the story. It takes you straight across the, the island, how drugs come in, how drugs leave. Yeah. All here in Trinidad and Tobago. All here in Trinidad and Tobago. Fiction, people. <laughs> Fiction. <laughs> All right, let's talk about Umay testicles. What's this all about? That is something that was written before 90 Days of Violence, just published after. That is a story um, of an event, an experience I had two, about two or three years ago, where I encountered something called testicular torsion. And as a result, you know, I, I just into the tongue, the health industry read. With this? Because I went across Mount Tope. So it, the, the funny thing about it is, you know, looking back at it, you, you pass through so many different institutions, like the second chapter is Mount Tope Hospital. And then from there I go to um, a private healthcare industry. So I'm looking at the, I'm trying to get the 